welcome to Dueling with Dalton, and today we're going to be talking about episode 39 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's anime series, where the duel between Yuga and Asana concludes, plus we learn more information about Asana's reasoning for wanting to crush Rush Dueling. So then, we learn about the deal that was created between Asana and Goha, and the details are as follows. If Asana can utterly crush Rush Dueling, and then Goha will reopen the manufacturing for Mutsuba machine parts thus allowing her family company to be revived. Now, if we combine this piece of information with the fact that Asana doesn't like modification in general, as she sees it as a disrespect to the original creation, then the rule about forbidding members of the Cavalry Machine Club from breaking the excavators makes a lot more sense. We learned about that rule in episode 33, where Chevelle kept telling Galleon, you're getting close to your machine's limit, so be careful. The reason as to why this makes more sense is simply because we now know they don't have the parts to restore their beloved machines. This is confirmed by the fact that Asana A states it herself, and B the simple fact is we saw R6 had some damage in previous episodes before this duel began, and yet it was not fixed before the duel, hence to why we see R6 slowly but surely over the course of this episode breaking down. Now, I really love seeing the emotion displayed by Asana's character in this episode, as it added more depth to the character itself, as well as making her seem a bit more like her age group. Slightly immature as well, in some places, giving off a slightly evil slash overconfident smile in thinking that she's one-upped Yuga in different turns and situations. However, one thing that was certain in both this episode and the last week's episode was the fact that Asana is very prideful and would do anything to achieve her goals, despite whether or not that means she has to become the bad girl. Clearly, she respects Yuga and even acknowledges the fact that he is a good person, plus she enjoys this rush duel that she's performing against Yuga himself. But the fact is, both rush dueling and Yuga stand in the way of her goals and dreams, so she has to put aside her personal feelings in order to survive, no, in order to allow, even, the Mutsuba legacy to survive. Now, after this episode, I have changed my mind about the Machine Cavalry Club. I love these bunch of goofballs, seeing their dedication towards Asana, holding up R6 while it was collapsing, actually made me personally want them to win. So when I saw the likes of Roman, Gakuto, and even Rook start questioning whether or not it's okay for Team Yuga to win and take away their chance at getting the Mutsuba goal achieved, and then of course, um, I thought that was done amazingly. But then again, I do have the question and the concern about Chevelle. After all, in that final explosion, we can't see his legs and his body seems to be in a very uncomfortable and painful position. So I do hope he's okay, we see him moving, but I mean, we don't know how like much time has passed between the ending of that duel. Well, I guess he was in the abandoned research lab, but you get what I mean. That looked painful. But then again, I love the fact that even to the very end, even after that explosion, the Cavalry Club were supporting Asana, saving her, and still putting her on that pedestal, showing that they deeply respect Asana, and they wish nothing but the best for her. Overall, when you look at the Machine Cavalry Club as villains, they don't come across as villains as such, which was slightly disappointing from their first introduction, because they came with a lot of fire and a lot of promise. However, I don't think it's a bad thing, because this group has been amazing throughout this arc so far. And I think the best way to describe the group itself would be like a family. They all help and support each other. After all, we saw the likes of Garlean go to Caterpillio and say, look boy, I understand what you're trying to do, but this goes against what the Great One is doing. She did not order this and brings him back. So they're all looking out for each other in their own weird way. While at the same time, they're all idolizing Asana and she in turn supports them while well, they support her. Because without the Machine Cavalry Club, they have nothing. The fact that Asana's dream needs to come true, otherwise the club will most likely disband and afterwards, just proves how much they really want to be as a group. Because they are doing so much, they are huddling together, they are doing everything in their power to help Asana win. 
Yeah, overall, I gained a lot of respect for the Cavalry Club. They're just great people. Hopefully, we see more of them in the future. Now, it's been a weekly thing for Yuga's character, but he continues to grow and grow as a very good protagonist. As not only does he show signs of selflessness, so he's never selfish, and he always tries to understand other people around him, including his opponents. And if possible, he'll try to help him, which in this case, he manages to do so. Trying to get Asana to smile first comes through Rush Dueling. As Rush Duels are a modification of the Goha way of dueling. And again, we learned that the Mutsuba family played a big part in the development stages of the creation of Goha style dueling. So you could say him showing Asana how fun rush dueling can be would be a small step in him helping him teach her a lesson about modification slash changing things being okay. Upon finding the Mutsuba R0 machine inside that abandoned research lab, Yuga tells Asana, after all, we creating something new, you will make a few mistakes. So you'll modify and modify until you get it right. So upon hearing that and seeing that the ancestors of the Mutsuba name modified R0 to perfect that machine in the past, Asana changes her views, thus becoming more open-minded, opening her horizon to different avenues and different concepts. This whole scene with them going to the abandoned lab was a great story narrative insert, as it calls back to episode 33 where Yuga was in the library reading a book, once again showing that within Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s, you can't forget about any of the scenes that are presented to us as the audience. Because every little detail is one day going to come back and be massively important. As that book we see him read gave him a hint to where this R0 was lurking or hiding. As for understanding Asana, I think Yuga did clearly see that she and her club aren't bad people. Instead, they're just shackled by the power of Goha. The Mutaba family name was key in the creation of the Goha city. However, as time moved on, their machines became less and less valuable as drone technology advanced, leading to Goha taking over the Mutsuba's influence, again, stopping the production of machine parts, putting Asana and her group in this current predicament. In terms of dueling action, I thought it was well structured, and I'm super happy to see the no maximums returned, as this would have taken away from the fairness between both duelists. Remember, Asana was irritated about the fact that she held such an overwhelming advantage in the duel against Yuga in round one. So her getting it back by some magical means would be contradictory to that statement that she made in the previous episode. To that as well, it wouldn't suit Yuga's goal or playstyle to gain a type of advantage so overwhelming as that. Again, because he's trying to make her smile, so he's trying to create a fun, lively atmosphere. And if he just had that overpowering uh, advantage over Asana, she would feel like she was cheated out of the win because her maximum disintegrated, but his didn't, his came back or something, or he was using Neil's maximum, or Nail. In my opinion, the decision to have both monsters disintegrate at the same time I thought was the correct choice. It would have been nice to see if Asana would have broken character and reused Excavator if she magically got it back, if given the chance again, as we would get to see her inner struggles if she would use that desperation to win this duel and use it and break her own uh, sense of honour. I don't think she would, but it's still interesting to see if she would have if given the opportunity. Now I have a question about Yuga's new ace monster and the effect he used to help him win the duel. Would he still have won if locked into using only three machine type monsters in his deck? Because as we know, Asana blocked him from attacking with any machine type monster. Therefore, Yuga used a spell card to change the typing of his new ace, thus allowing him to access the levels of spellcaster monsters in his graveyard. Because I don't think... Yuga had many machine type monsters in his graveyard. And yes, you can make the argument that Yuga would have used a spell card regardless. But to me, the way that it was structured 
looked like he was using the effect to get levels from um, machine type monsters before Asana used a spell and before he uh, before she used a trap sorry and before he used that spell card so then would he just be using the levels of two Karibos in his graveyard and maybe one other monster because he couldn't use Magnum Overroad because that disintegrated it wasn't available to him in the graveyard so did not make him confused about that but nevertheless maybe Asana choked we'll just have to deal with the results we have at the moment Again, I could be wrong, that might not have made a lot of sense, but if you can help clear that up in the comment section down below, that would be brilliantly appreciated. Nevertheless though, it was a really fun duel, and I really did enjoy it, and I was actually rooting for Asana's group to win, just because of the way that they presented the Cavalry Club in all of their camaraderie, and yeah, I was being slightly swayed. Nevertheless though, it was super fun, and I preferred the information side of things to the duel itself, but ne nevertheless, still entertaining. Overall, I thought it was a great ending to a really good arc overall, as we now have a new group that Yuga and friends can rely on if the situation arises that they need their assistance. As well as the fact is, it looks like the Goha drone is now looking to take action. So I'm really, really excited and can't wait to see what plans start getting put into motion by Goha Corporation. I thought the comedy was good in this episode. We didn't get a lot of comedy, but it makes sense because it was a very serious and plot heavy episode. Nevertheless though, the stuff with Mimi was pretty funny, so I did like that. The emotion and voice acting in this episode was top marks and brilliant. That especially goes for Asana's VA because she was amazing in that performance. The animation likewise was brilliant too, so that made the pleasant of watching the episode all the more enjoyable. But oh my god, that ending with the younger versions of the cast was so adorable and seeing Tiger hold Asana's hand makes me think there could be some more interactions between them in the future. As we know, Tiger has some history with the Machine Club, so he is hoping to possibly a tag duel team up of Asana and Tiger. That team would be unstoppable. Anyways, I want to know what you thought of this episode and the arc overall in the comment section down below. Let me know your thoughts and hopefully you enjoyed this video. And uh, subscribe if you're new for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content from me in the future. And of course, I hope you have an amazing day. Aligator, madanit, goodbye.